answers as much as like all the things that I've done wrong and a couple of thoughts on how to avoid them. Um, little outline of what I'm doing. I actually really glad that I went right after Solomon because I feel like my talk dovetails a lot with what he's talking about. Um, I sort of want to talk about like an approach to solving the problem of over and engineering. Um, it's not necessarily going to give you the answer, but it's like how to think about the problem so that we can sort of find that middle ground that everyone wants to talk about. Um, we sort of know that the answer is somewhere in the middle, but actually finding what is right for our team and the decision So that's the one problem. On the other problem, you have under-engineering, where you overlook major mistakes that the rebels can find in about 10 minutes after receiving your plans. Um, that seems like a fairly major architectural flaw, no matter how many um, star systems you can blow up. <laughs> I was just re-watching it. It's amazing how fast they were able to like, find that flaw in literally 10 minutes. Like, yeah, we found it. We can blow it up. <laughs> so. And those Ewoks. Yeah. So, obviously we know that over and under here problems are, are bad. Uh, we sort of think that's But I want to step back and think of why is over engineering and under engineering a problem? Like why is, it always pays to ask questions that seem obvious because you'll often find out that the answer to that is um, So I want to talk a little about question topics and why under engineering would be bad. Um, the product is fundamentally the bridge between what your business priorities are, like what you define your market, who you define what you're working for, and what the user experience is there. Um, now you remember I'm a CTO in engineering. You notice there's no engineering in that. There's no code. It's not about the code base. It's not about how many servers you have. The product is that experience and how that experience works towards what your